Well, hello and welcome again to another End Times Prophecy Bible Study. And we are on, gosh, I'm losing track, week 31, I think. <laughs> and uh, we are continuing our study of Revelation, the book of Revelation. And so last week, uh, what we did was we, we did something a little bit unusual, which is that we went through all of the, the list of sins, which is located in Revelation 9, verses 20 to 21. And I put forward a theory. Uh, it is just a theory. It's just an idea that I have. I mean, I could be wrong, but I do think it's rather compelling that actually each of the trumpets that are blown are blown as a result of or in response to um, each of the sins that is listed uh, within um, Revelation 9 verses 20 to 21. And uh, and so maybe we could just uh, quickly have somebody read Revelation 9, 20 to 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the work of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wind, which neither could, can see, nor hear, nor walk. Verse 21. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorrows, nor sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Amen. 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 Okay. And so what we did was we went through that list. We went through that list of sins and uh, we, we started off by looking at the worshiping of devils and idols. And I put forward the suggestion that the blowing of the fourth trumpet is God's judgment on these devils and idols, these false gods um, who uh, who have been taking all of this worship away from Yehovah Elohim ever since uh, the Garden of Eden. And we saw that when the fourth angel sounds, so the third part of the sun was smitten, the third part of the moon, the third part of the stars. And then we equated that with Revelation 12, where we're told that um, that uh, the Satan is cast out of heaven and that he takes a third of the stars with him. And so we put forward that suggestion that that fourth trumpet is in response to this sin of worshipping devils and idols. And then the second one that we looked at was the sin of the murders. And uh, we noted that uh, that the punishment for murder is uh, that whoever murders uh, his blood must be must be shed. And then we noted that when the sixth angel sounds, that four angels are loosed and that what they do is that they are given permission to slay men, to slay the third part of men. And so we see a lot of men being killed. We see a lot of blood being shed and that possibly this is a punishment for all the blood that has been shed through murders. The next one that we looked at was the sin of um, fornication. And uh, I noted that in Leviticus 18, that it says that when uh, people fornicate, that it brings a judgment on the land. And that, I believe, was in Le Leviticus 18, that there will be um, iniquity upon the land, that the land will become defiled. And so then I, I thought that perhaps the first trumpet for sure, where hail and fire is, is cast down and then a third part of the trees are burned. And then, of course, you have the sea. So I, I thought perhaps that was in, a, in response to that. So we haven't looked at sorceries and we haven't looked at thefts. And that's what we're going to look at today. So what I want to do is I just want to look at this sin of thefts. OK, and so I thought what we would do is we would read from Exodus 22, starting at verse one. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be an ox or an ass or a sheep, he shall restore 
double. Hallelujah. Okay. okay. So we see then that um, what God says with regards to theft, that his justice demands that if there's been a theft, okay, then once the thief has been found out, that there has to be restoration. Okay. There has to be restoration that whoever was stolen from has to receive back that which was stolen. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you a bit of a skill testing question here. Given that the, um, that the judgment or the justice for theft is restoration, which trumpet do we think is in response to mankind's thefts? And I have to say that you won't find the answer in Revelation 8 or 9. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> it's the seventh one. The seventh yeah. trumpet. Hallelujah. Really? Because what happens at the seventh trumpet? The seventh trump angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> In other words, remember, um, when we read about the Jubilee, we're talking about the Jubilee. When that seventh trumpet sounds, what is going to happen? Everything is going to be restored. Okay, we keep hearing about the World Economic Forum's Great Reset. Well, they know that a great, great reset is coming, and it is called the Day of the Lord, the Year of Jubilee, the Yobelay. When that ram's horn sounds, we read all about that in an earlier lesson, okay? And so basically, when we were talking about the symbolism of the trumpets, right? This was one of the symbolism of the trumpets, the, the yobele, the ram's horn blowing. And when that seventh ram's horn blows, the yobele will be sounded. And all the kingdoms of this earth will be transferred over to Yahoshua HaMashiach, and the land will be restored to Yahovah. And we read that in Leviticus 25, verse 23, the land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, and ye are strangers and sojourners with me. And that's what happened was in the Yobelay year, in the Jubilee year, the land went back to Yahovah, and then it was redistributed according to the original inheritance. And I'm, I'm not going to um, do the scriptures. I mean, this would this will be a separate thing when we talk about the day of the Lord. But this is one of the things that will happen is that the um, the bloodborne Jews, the 144,000 and any of the remnant, they will come into the land and they will receive their inheritance. You can read about that in Ezekiel uh, chapters 40 to 49. Okay, and so it is going to be an, an amazing, amazing time. And so that, I believe, is the trumpet that responds to all of mankind's thefts. <laughs> He's going to say, I'm having it back. <laughs> the silver and the gold are mine. And I had one more um, verse related to that, and that is in Isaiah 60. And um, mm -hmm. just to get a full sense, it's quite a few scriptures, but I do think that they're worth reading. Uh, it's verses 4 to 17 in Isaiah 60. Yeah. So, so Ansel, could you please read Isaiah 60 for us, verses 4 to 17? And this is all talking about what will happen after the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Ansel. Okay. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart will sw shall swell with joy, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover your land. The, dromed the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. And they shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together to you. The rams of Nebeloth shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance on my altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. When Who are these who fly like a cloud and like doves to their roosts? Surely the coastlands shall wait for me. And the ships of Tarshish will come first. Hmm. 
The ships of Tarshish will come first. They bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, to the name of the Lord your God and to the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. The sons of foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Therefore your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in procession. For the nation and kingdom which will not serve you shall perish, and those nations shall be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the pine, and the box tree together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Uh, also the sons of those who afflicted you shall come, bowing to you, and all those who despise you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet. And they shall call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, so that no one went through you, I will make you an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. You shall drink the milk of the Gentiles and milk the breast of kings. You shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze. And instead of stones, iron. I will also make your officers peace and your magistrates righteousness. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, Isn't that an awesome, awesome, mm. awesome, awesome, awesome scripture? And so there we really see, you know, that these nations who have stolen, who've stolen from God, they've stolen from God's people, they've stolen from Jerusalem, right? Turn them into slaves, all of these things, scatter them, that they, that they will restore everything that has been stolen will be restored back into the land of Israel, back into Jerusalem, back to the people of God. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome prophecy. And that's what will happen at the seventh trump. Hallelujah. All those thefts will be, <laughs> will be paid for. Hallelujah. Any comments about that before we move on? Very strong, very strong scriptures. Yeah, very strong. Yeah. I was just thinking that I don't think we realize how much has been stolen um, from Israel. Um, not just um, possessions and things, but but they're very... Uh, what's the word I want? <coughs> Spirit. Because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm reading this Id <laughs> Idiot's mm. Guide to the Jewish Nation and Culture. And it is just amazing how many Jews have really made people's countries and yet they were not thought anything of. It's, I think that's been stolen from them as well. So it's a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. For all of God's people. But yes, I hear what you're saying in terms of the 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 seed of jacob absolutely yeah <laughs> but it's all going to be restored hallelujah soon and very soon yes. <laughs> oh, wow. and, and the way god restores you see what he says if it's one sheep you steal four will be given back to you so <laughs> that's really good thanks <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Hallelujah. Okay, so that brings us then to the last sin on the list and the last trumpet that we haven't mentioned, and that is the sin of sorceries. 